fun. It's our adoption event week and we are so excited to get horses into new homes. We're just waiting on our first adopters to show up. Who will All right, so we're gonna head over here to the training barn. Um, I did the pull a horse out for you to look at. His name is Blaze. That's my guy that I've been watching. That's the one you've been watching? Yeah, keep uh, calling about and yeah. checking on. It seems like he does know some things. Uh, we did throw the saddle on him. He stood perfectly fine for putting the saddle on. And I had somebody else come out to do the fake ons to just put weight in the stirrup to see how he'd react. And he was moving around like he was a little confused about the situation, but he didn't hint at bucking or anything like that. So if you do take him, I would recommend putting him in training for 30 days. Find a trainer that could do that, just to make sure that there's nothing in there that might jump out at you while you're riding down the trail. Okay. Yeah. So what do you think about him? I don't know. I am hoping I can get him to like me. Yeah. And um, he's very cute. He's very sweet. It would just be you know, a matter of working with him. And I would still definitely recommend before you try to ride him, have a trainer oh, check Oh, definitely. Yeah. yeah, definitely. So the adopters came in. Um, they did get more information and they just want to make sure that it's the right match. Uh, she is talking to her other son right now, just to kind of figure out what she wants to do. We did offer to have her come back in a few days and right now she's just trying to make the decision. I called my son and couldn't get him, but I did get a hold of my friend. She's a horse person. She lives in California. She said, you need to wait and think about it longer. And then you need to see if you need to just wait and try to find one that's already ready to go, like that knows more and is ready to go. And I do. <sighs> I know it's frustrating. I do. Like I came all the way out here. It's but just, no, it's just, he's so cute. And then you just fall in, even, you yeah. don't even know when you're already falling in yeah, love with them. I know, I know. You know, I, and it's like, you have, you know, oh, we could. You're gonna you be know. devastated yeah. though if it's the wrong choice and you have to bring yeah. him back. Yeah. As and cute as he is, that's, yeah. gonna, that's gonna break your heart. Yeah, so. and, and that's true. And I would rather see you come back and we can help you find the perfect horse. Cause you know what Corey's gonna be doing? He's gonna be, as he's evaluating, training, looking at horses, he's gonna be like, I remember that family and this will be a great horse for them. And that's what he'll do. And he'll come back and then I'll get in touch with you. And if you haven't found another horse by then, he'll be like, hey, we just realized we have this horse. How about yeah. this horse? Because we'll, as we do more evaluations, more training, we'll, we'll find more horses. Yeah. You know? So the adopters came out, they had decided that they're not gonna take anything home today. Um, they're gonna take a little bit more time to make their decision. In the meantime, they're gonna try to find a trainer that might be able to work with the horse under saddle. And we are also gonna keep looking to find a already broke horse for them to just start riding on the trails. Today we're delivering hay to Horse Plus, uh, 157 bales um, of just pasture mix hay. Got a little orchard grass in it, most of kind of rough hay. That's what they kind of ordered this time, just gonna get us through uh, till uh, the pure pure orchard grass comes in in the middle of May. And so we'll be unloading this in uh, the stable here for Horse Plus as we have for the last 10 years, I guess. Okay, we got her done, 157 bales. Uh, put in the barn and that'll do us till about May. Uh, rest of this month, uh, April. Uh, 
Let's something. Let's see weather turns bad again. Grass is growing, though, man. Things are looking good today. Good day, beautiful day, sunshine, grass growing. I tell you one thing, life's good. Life is good. I'm gonna go try to catch Kissimmee. I've never caught Kissimmee before, so we'll see how well this goes. She has a hurt foot, so uh -huh. Dr. Nancy's gonna look at it. That wasn't bad, see? You got her. It's not over yet. Oh. I'm kidding. Okay, darling. Let's get some drugs today. Drugs I am using to sedate her with will not hurt the baby. So that's one thing. I'd rather sedate and not fight her as bad to get her upset than I would be to fight or get her all hyper, all irritated that way on it. So, but now the drugs are safe for the baby. Okay, so when we are palpating a mare, palpating means to feel, is if I'm gonna feel if the mare's pregnant, I'm actually gonna put my arm into the rectal. Now, you have to do that very gently because you can tear the rectal lining that way, but we can do this and be able to feel the baby because the uterus is right below the rectum. So I am not feeling the actual, I'm not touching the actual baby. I'm not going into the sack the baby is in. I am feeling the baby through the wall of the rectum and through the wall of the uterus. So there's two layers between me and baby, and again, you'd be very gentle as you go in because you don't want to risk a tear. And I am trying to see where baby is at today. Baby is down low. I am touching the top of baby's head. And to give you a relation of where I'm at, the baby's head is like down here. So that tells me, unless something happens, we're not having a baby soon, which is what I've, I'd always, she was always a little uh, smaller baby than behind Candy. Baby is bigger than the last time I found it, so that's a good thing. Now I'm gonna check her milk out really well. See if it, she's making any milk. She is making no milk whatsoever, which doesn't surprise me based on how low baby is. Because as they get ready to fold, the babies start getting into position and they literally Come like they're diving out that way with the nose between their front legs. So baby's still down here. As baby gets closer to coming, it should come up and progress and be higher up. So unfortunately for all the watchers, she's gonna be an April giraffe, so you get a little while longer to watch her. So her access does not seem to be bothering her today. I took off the wrap Corey had put on it yesterday. So what we're gonna to do today is we are going to she hates to pick up her feet. She's notorious for this. So again, if it's not gonna do her any harm, I am not going to manhandle her and stress her out. So we will do a little grooming on her while we have her here, give her some good love, and we'll see how she does. If she's not lame on that in the morning, we'll just wait and let our farrier on Wednesday get in there and while he trims her up, take a better look at it. So we have an adoption appointment that's here to look at a few horses and we're really hoping that they find the right match for them and one of the horses goes home today. Well, he's a nice size. Yeah. He's beautiful. Like I said, he's great on the ground too. He just he probably needs a, about 30 days in the round pen just riding him before just take him out. That would just be my opinion. And then this is Briar over here. I was gonna mess them on the ground a little bit right now. Yeah. And then see how he would do with everything. He backs up nice, I'll tell you that much. That's fairly, you don't have to put any pressure down there. You pretty much just have to walk forward when he's going.
definitely need a refresher on a few things. This one? Alright, so who's adopting? Are you adopting this one? Yes. Alright, come on in, we'll get the adoption picture. What about Briar, honey? Well, that's up to you, whatever you think. Oh, I think we can definitely okay. give him a good home and put, have a use for him. Sounds okay. good. Okay. So this paper includes all the details to transfer it for his name. He gets vet care, anything. Um, he can get his microchip checked. And we can keep track of it like that. Um, so here's one. I found out about Horse Plus through a friend of mine, Miss Tracy. She adopted two horses today, Blaze and Briar. I actually, I came for Briar and he wasn't uh, exactly what I was looking for. So I ended up not taking a horse home, but uh, he'll still be at the farm, which is cool. Maybe get to work with him a little bit. And uh, this is this place is amazing. Um, if I ever consider adopting another horse, definitely would be my, my first choice to come here. Everybody's just super amazing here. They're very nice people, very helpful. So it's been all around just a great experience. Thank you all so much. Appreciate it. So this is Cherish. We got Cherish in the January auction. Um, she has been in the vet barn just to get some weight on her. And now she is looking pretty good for, you know, baby. She's got decent weight. Uh, Tawny has been working with her just getting her comfortable around people and got her leading. Since she's graduated kindergarten, now you can start working on her with the other things. So I am gonna introduce her to the flag. I'm just gonna start off really slow with it. And as soon as she starts to get worried, I'll take it away. I want her to reach out and mess with it and I'll just let it drop down. Do the same thing. Wait for her, good girl. Work on touching her neck and shoulder with it today. We'll start working on the more, more of it later, just working down her body with it. Baby horses' attention spans are usually only about, uh, I'd say anywhere from five to 20 minutes long. So you gotta be really, really careful when you're working with the baby horse that you don't overdo it. I'll do that one more time, see if she'll be a little bit more calm with it on this side. Right there. And that's all I'm gonna do with her today besides groom her up. Um, she is a baby horse, so it, like I said, you just need to have those shorter training sessions. Just introduce things very slowly to them. We rescued Glimmer many years ago from a livestock auction and he actually was in stacks when we bought him and uh, saved his life from uh, going on down the slaughter pipeline. Through the rehab process, uh, Clint C., who was a absolutely phenomenal animal activist doing everything he could to stop the big lick animal abuse, he, he actually uh, took Glimmer, put him into the witness protection program, interestingly enough, and uh, Clint C. sadly passed away recently. And part of his estate plan was that Glimmer would come back to us. So I'm out here today making a huge pen for Glimmer to live in. And he's gonna love it out here. The grass is growing, the sun is shining. Glimmer is absolutely going to love this new pen. And so I've got to get back to work and finish it. I've only got a few more panels to put up. 
and then Glimmer's pen is done. So that's pretty exciting. So many people would be discouraged because I'm so close, but I know that there's always a solution inside the problem. So, um, yeah, I think I can make it work. Let's find out. Cool, I'll just wire it up and I'll be done. But of course, I'm on the wrong side of the fence. And just like that, Glimmer's pen is done. Well, I still have to put the uh, access panel back, but it's done. Uh, I think it was about 90 panels today, so it's nice to have it done. This is Hiawassee. We brought her in today because the farrier is coming out to look at the horses. So we have everybody we need for the farrier right now except for Candy. Um, for Candy, we're going to have to trailer her over here to the training barn to get her in the stocks. And if we feel like that is unsafe, then we will probably have to bring her up to quarantine. To be able to sedate her, that would probably be the safest bet if she's acting up in this chute down here. Um, I just gotta get a couple horses moved real quick and then I'm gonna go get the trailer hooked up and grab candy. Hi, <laughs> right, sweetheart. What are you doing? We've done this before. There you go. Good girl. Good job. Good job. Today is failure day. We're going to start with Ginger. She has done really well. Uh, Elijah put on the block last week. We added an extension as part of her therapy after that, and uh, she seems to be doing good with it. So today, we're going to get him to take down her heel a little bit to drop that down more to a more natural position. Uh, we'll probably put the extension back on just to keep her from not wanting to break over too quickly until she fully gets that stretched out. So. But we're going to see, today's the first day we've tried just oral sedation with her, not injectable. So we'll see how she does. And then after he gets done with farrier work, we'll change her bandage, see how the skin looks, where the suture's busted apart. But so far, so good. So. It's on there tight. <laughs> Yeah, we was, a, we was afraid that, um, it was like, worst thing she does, she pulls it off. Well, we made certain it was not coming off. So, cause we like, we didn't want to have to keep laying her down every day. There we go. Now I get to cut off all of her multiple layers of tape to reuse her piece of wood. <laughs> well, Doc wants us to trim her heels down a little bit more, and her heels are very much under this wood. And I could potentially just try to thin the wood down in the back, but I'd also like to see her foot and see how that's doing, so I'm gonna go ahead and pull this off and go from there. There it is. Well, that echo lock held really well. That's good. I was gonna say, at least everything held that we've tried to put on there. I mean, her feet, her foot, her feet, her foot is looking good. Um, it's 
it's a strong foot, which is good because we're putting a lot of stress on it with all these extensions and all that fun stuff, but it's taking it well. It's not, we're not tearing anything. We're not pulling anything apart. So that's good. When do you think, can we take more heel off? A week, do we need to wait two weeks? Just as, as fast as she grows it out, um, which should, I mean, she's in stall rest. She's not wearing any of it. Right, that's the thing. Cause yeah, we can't really let her out cause it'll. But yeah, especially if you've got, if you've got a, uh, if the extension you have is just bandaged on, we can, you know, pull it every time I'm here yeah. and check her and, and try to keep her heels as That'll low as possible. That'll be ideal if we can take as much as we can each time, yeah. so that way we keep Don't we get let her down where out. she needs to better. Yeah, yeah, that's the ultimate goal is to get it down as quick as we can, but slowly, so she's right. used to stretched it out. And even now, I'm not sure she can touch her heels to the ground. So, I mean, until they come in contact, the the length isn't terribly relevant. Yeah, well, that's pretty darn close. Mm -hmm. So we're getting there, darling. We're getting there. Just gonna take a little bit longer, but that's okay. So this is kissing me. She's gonna get her feet trimmed now. Okay, kiss me. But yeah, she's got a little open abscess there in her left front. Very good. It's it started draining though. It's draining, yeah, and it well it was packed Saturday. We took it off Sunday. Uh, she didn't want me to have her foot to be able to put it back on. So I was like, fine, we'll leave it open. And then of course, you know, Monday she's lame again. So we put those on and then yesterday she was walking good. So we just gave her a butte and we're like, Elijah's coming. Perfect. It's like, you know, we know she's your favorite child, so. Yep, we might need to excavate a little bit, but. Yeah, she definitely needs to be, uh, make certain we got, we're on the right path with it, so. Yeah, we'll start on that foot. Let's see what we have here. There's the abscess I was promised. These are hard feet. Just sharpened this knife this morning too. I opened it up just a little bit, but I'm not gonna, I'm gonna let her grow most of it out because. I'll just give her some more butte for a few days just to be, if she wants to fake a lameness on us, so. Yep. I don't want to hurt her. All right, she's good. And Glimmer is the walking horse that used to be padded, so he may not need sedation, but if he does, we'll sedate him, so. You're a bit long, aren't you? Hey, big boy. What is up with your ears? Warts? I don't think I've ever, I don't think I've ever seen that before. That is kind of nasty. I'm sorry, buddy. Oh yeah, you're gonna be an angel. You're gonna be an angel. Yeah, that'll that'll wreck a pair of feet. His his aren't as bad as I would have expected. Yeah. Sure knows how to get his feet worked on. So we just finished up with Glimmer, the big old walking horse, and uh, he, was, he was great. He was a very good boy, behaves himself very well, and he's got pretty good feet. Um, just, you know, regular maintenance. They don't need anything special. So we're actually wrapping up here in the vet barn and we're heading over to the training barn. And uh, I think we've got some spicy ones lined up. Drama. Our unhandled pregnant mare. How you doing, Elijah? I'm doing pretty good, how are you? I'm doing good. while we're waiting on her. See how high was she? She didn't need sedation before, but I can do her while we're trying to get this one wrangled on that one, the little young okay. cold up there. So if she needs it, we can do it. Yeah. 
It seems like it might take a hot minute. That might take a minute. So yeah, try her while if I have to, we'll start sedating her. All right. So. All right. You gonna behave yourself? Nope. Nope. Easy, easy. Okay. Okay. Easy, easy. Oh. Attitude. Be scarier if you weren't like 600 pounds. Good negotiation. <laughs> she need a little extra to make it easier. Yeah, maybe just a bit to take the edge off. She's not being mean, but she's uh That's okay. I don't think she's gonna stand still the whole time. Today, as excited as she is, I can sit here and drug her all day. She's gonna fight it off. So today she just needs to learn the basics of being tied, knowing that she's not gonna get her way with that. And then she needs to be worked with daily. And we will reattempt next week to get her sedated to trim her feet. So, but again, when they get that excited sedation, they fight it off with their adrenaline. So it's not gonna be productive, but she needs to be practice just being tied and somebody being near her, so. This is Cherish, uh, we're trimming her feet today. She did just come out of the vet barn and Tawny had been working with her quite a bit in there and she handed it over to me. I uh, gave her a bath the other day and completely groomed her up. Uh, she does seem to trust me quite a bit, but she still needs a lot of work. So Cherish was her first time in for her trim today. A little sedation just to take the edge off because again, she's not been handled a whole lot, but she done fine, stood good for Elijah. So um, we'll just keep working with her and get her more used to being handled by people. This is Bozeman and uh, his feet aren't ideal. We, uh, we, don't love, we don't love Bozeman's feet, but uh, he's not a lost cause. He's just gonna take a lot of work. Oh gosh, a lot of work. Trimming feet like this is pretty low pressure because it's not like you can make them worse. Yeah, it's kind of hard too, so. It's rough, isn't it, buddy? That's a heavy nip. Pretty good, we got a lot done. Got a lot done, a couple that really needed help, a couple that were pretty routine. Um, yeah, full day, I think we did, we did nine, or no, 11 horses, so yeah. Gonna be back out here next week and uh, keep on going, there's always more. So we have one more adoption appointment here today. Um, this is a previous adopter. She adopted the Mustang Honey and also um, a Paso mare that we had named Miney. Miney, she was one of my favorites here, but uh, training her was very difficult. It always felt like I was taking three steps forward and two steps back. Um, they are looking for another horse right now and they are gonna be bringing Miney back um, like I said, it was difficult working with her. It always felt like we were making some progress, but then always taking those steps back. So um, they're gonna bring her back here and take another horse home. And she is doing the right thing by bringing the horse back. We're gonna be able to get it looked at and see if there's anything underlying that we have missed and go from there. I'll go ahead and bring her in the round pen. Okay, sure. And I'll kind of show you what we've been doing. by building trust, getting her to look at me. I've tried to get her to make that first contact, but she really still needs some desensitizing around her mouth and up above her head. But she'll let you touch her anywhere else. Her main thing is, same thing out in open space, she's probably gonna try to run. But once you get up to her. She has that where she could stop and actually let you. Yeah, she'll tip her nose in the halter for you. 
Yeah, she doesn't make you chase her around too much. At least, like in the round pen, you can walk right up to her usually. And then as soon as you put your hand underneath here, she knows that she's supposed to get ready for that halter. She's watching you, waiting for you to tell her. <laughs> <laughs> she was watching you there, waiting for you to tell her, okay, yeah. come in. So they are gonna come back on Monday to get Hopi. They did not bring the trailer today and they are gonna be bringing another horse that they adopted from here back. Um, the other horse that they got, however, is doing well with their training. So they will be back Monday to pick her up and drop my knee off. Jen's Ice Glimmer is going to get his full uh, workup with Dr. Nancy. He does have a very ongoing long issue with his ears, um, so we'll be taking a look at that. We're also going to be x-raying him um, and getting kind of a, just a plan for his care going forward here at our facility. I like to say that Glimmer was in the Horse Witness Protection Program because when he was rescued, um, he, you know, he was in stacks and chains when, when I first saw him. When we purchased him, he was at our facility briefly and then went uh, to another facility in Middle Tennessee and the USDA um, was actually there and they looked at him, the veterinarian that worked for the USDA, confirmed that he had been soared. And um, so from that point, I hadn't, I, he was adopted by Clint C and then I didn't see him for a number of years. Um, he did come back to our facility temporarily while another place was being able to be found for him. Um, but ultimately, Clint wanted him to be basically hidden away because he was on the road so much traveling and going to these protests and, you know, just everywhere he could to try to put an end to the big lick that he was afraid that if somebody knew he was on the road, they might come and do something bad to Glimmer or steal him or try to... Who, who knows what. So that's why Glimmer was kept secret of, as far as his location. But, you know, we did bring him up here and, you know, we, we've got cameras, we can keep an eye on, on the situation. Um, our fencing's secure. And so if for some reason we felt that there was a concern about his safety, we could move him to another location. We have people here 24 seven. Um, on staff to make sure that all the animals are taken care of, including Glimmer now. All right, you ready to go let Dr. Nancy check you out? All right, come on, buddy. Is he scary? Is he scary? It's okay. He's nice. Yeah, he's nice. Very scary. Never seen a horse before, have you? Good thing he's nice. Good go boy, Glamour. Look at that. He wants to sniff. He wants to be like that scary. I like it. He's trying to hide. <laughs> he is just a smidge over 63 inches, 15'3. Yeah, just a smidge over. Glimmer's had a history of heaves, and we can see he's, he's still having breathing problems, so we're gonna create a plan for that. Um, okay, sweetie, let's take a listen to you first, okay? Hello, darling. Yeah, I don't have a treat in my hand, I'm sorry. Thank you. Smell that. This is molasses. It's a little molasses block. Rebecca, do you want to hold this here for him? He's such a gentleman, like he's always just so, he's not the normal. So the big lick horses, they cut their tendons in their tail, so that's where, like, that's why his tail is not normal. Mm -hmm. 
Just mm-hmm. some weirdness. Weird, I'm saying a little bit. We might be able to try to x-ray through He may there. have gotten hit at some point and a little extra scar tissue there. Yeah, he's had it as long as I've known Yeah, him. he's always, yeah. And we'll notice it more the worse his heaves gets because it's right there at the edge of the line there, so yeah. So we've taken over 60 x-rays, let's see, 63 x-rays of Lummer, so Dr. Nancy's going to take a look. Um, at a veterinary clinic, you're looking at um, quite a bit of money if you took 63 x-rays. Um, so that's what's great with having Dr. Nancy here on site. We can do major diagnostics and dig into the horse's entire health, which is great. But he would be like the average horse out there yeah. compared to what we normally what we, see. We see the worst of the worst, unfortunately. And we yes. see the ones that have the problems. Yeah. Now, those are what I expected, mm-hmm. narrowing spaces. So. Do you want to get from this side? Yeah, so I mean, that's for his age, I would have expected that. So he, as they get older, and again, just like with us aging, those joint spaces tend to compress with time, which again, can set up arthritis. <laughs> So that's one of the things that we see consistently the older a horse gets, the more decreased joint space just because of beginning of arthritis with them. And he is 20 years old, so that doesn't shock me that he has some compression because of that. So and so there is a little spot on his left front where he's had a little bone callus or does have one that you can see on there. It's a minor one, but Externally, you don't see it, but there is internally one, so, but just something to make a note of. Looking at Glimmer's x-rays, he's actually fairly good for his age, so we do have some old age changes that way. There's a little bit, I'm gonna look a little closer on his right front knee on that, so, uh, but overall, he's sound walking at the current moment. Uh, We are gonna turn him out for some exercise time uh, daily. He will be out in the free roaming pastures, so he can be free, be a horse, and uh, we'll keep an eye on his breathing, his COPD, because it's ideally always better outside than in a barn environment with the COPD, because barns tend to be so dusty, things like that. So I'll definitely keep an eye as we move him outside, see how he does, and again, make changes as we see needed on that. All right, I think he's ready to get out and check out his uh, new home. We've uh, been wanting to expand the facility into this big pasture and um, the weather just hasn't been good. So now the weather's good and um, it will be primarily Glimmer's pasture, but other horses will get to use it too uh, when he's not using it. So, all right, he is ready to go. Looky how big this horse is. But do you like this? So this is a new pasture that we've never used now that, that we've been able to expand our facility. So I think he's gonna love this. This is a beautiful pasture and grows really nice grass. I think he's going to run and just be in heaven out here. You excited? You want to go check it out? All right, buddy. You get to go stretch your legs. Come on. Stretch your legs, buddy.